All right, it's time to hop into some more Sadness Simulator 2022. What's up, Dapper Squad? It's your boy Darius back at it again with 86 episodes 5 and 6. Last episode, we had some external and internal conflict with Lena and the rest of the Spearhead Squad. And one of you guys even commented, you know, in terms of her dealing with her own self reflections and realizations that she thinks she cares about them, but she really didn't as much as she wished she did because she never asked their actual name. She only was cool with their, um, their sigils or their code names, I should say. But one thing she did ask was the the cat's real name. You know, she asked the cat's name, but would never go out of her way to say, because, and it gets a lot deeper. I can't even speak on it, but like it's like this whole thing, like, like even though she actively is thinking of them as humans, subconsciously, it's super deep in there. Like it's not even an active thought. She does see them as lesser somewhat, and she's trying to change that. That's why she made the effort to go to the cemetery where they listed her dad's name which they don't even lift list 86 names and that's why shin keeps all the tags and stuff like that it's just crazy the whole story goes deep but we found out that possibly um lena knows his brother so we'll find out what's going on with that i do need to re-get the name they said at the end because i think the last name was nozen now nozen but i don't i didn't get the first name i got shin i need to get his brother i'm super excited to find out what happens though i say we gotta help hop into it don't forget if you guys want early access or full length to this show and all the other shows i'm watching we are four episodes ahead early access on patreon links are in the description like always make sure to check that out don't forget to subscribe and to click that bell so you guys always know when i post over here on the dapper channel follow all the social medias instagram twitch tiktok twitter all at dapper darius much appreciated y'all let's hop into this uh 86 episodes five and six this first one is called i'm with you let's do this April 13th, 2142. So this is six years ago. This has to be when Lena went on the front lines with her dad. And those are one of the Legionist auto Legion's autonomous bots. Here comes the Undertaker. It's literally Shin's same juggernaut. And I'm assuming that's his brother who's in it? That was a good shot. He does look pretty badass, I can't can't lie. I like the hair and the glasses. So we were saved by an 86er. But the Pops and everyone else in that little squad died. That's so sad. Some chocolate? Heck yeah. It's a, it's a good question. And then these should be the words that, yep, that Lena was trying to live by for the rest of her life. And I'm actually hearing them for the first time. Something to be proud of. Little did he know how much he would actually inspire her in the future. I feel you, man. <laughs> and she shares it with him. He's been drafted. He's been conscripted. Yeah, I can't go home yet. I love the shots on the show. So well done. The light shining into the, t the, the juggernaut now. Having those you care about, needing to be strong and survive in order to go back and see them. Mm, with the moon, mm, with that transition to the moonlight now, six years ago, or six years in the future, current time, I should say. I was about to say, that's the only thing I could picture. Really? What do you mean, no? Like, there's a chance he's still alive? Alright, June 24th. So it's been a week or a few days at the minimum. I never realized this, but I like how Annette wears her, just her lab coat over her military uniform. I thought it was just a different uniform, but it seems to be, you know, just that. I like that. She's truthfully sticking with what she said. Which I think Annette's going to be one of those tough shells to crack. It's been another week, it's been th six more days, 30th. Talking to Shin, getting his advice on the situation. I think Annette's going to be one of those tough shells to crack, but she seems like a genuinely good person in her heart, so I think we can win her over, you know? 
Mm. Shin's giving her the okay to have some fun, you know? Yep. You need to find a good balance between fun and work. All work, no play makes for a dull day, you know? Revolution Festival. Hmm. So he remembers the palace? So he used to be in District 1? Really? Really? What? I'm very interested about their backstory. Yeah, come on. Okay. Oh, he pictures uh, Shin and her just from their outlines. That's funny. She's having little girly daydreams, you know. It happens. Ooh, with that with that symbolism of the bug of an insect coming. Ooh, I don't like that. I like it at the same time. This show is so nerve-wracking when it comes out quickly. They're able to get into combat, you know? Like, it's like a normal conversation into a... Why? I know. I, want, I can't go know what's going on without the para raid. She said she's not doing it. And Shin said he warned her. He said cut the para raid because there's a lot of black sheep around here. They have said in the past that people who are who are the para raid for the spearhead unit tend to hear the voices of the dead and be haunted. Is it the para raid itself? Is it the black sheep? Oh, and then she thinks of fucking Kaye. God damn it. Yeah, talk about a stressful day. And that's what I'm saying. We were just having a good time with Annette talking about dresses and... Okay, now it's Jesus. That's transition and how it's red and upside down and so it's like a nightmare. Oh my god, that was so well done. Oh, and the picture of her dad. Oh my god, I literally have goosebumps, but in the worst way possible. Like, not good ones. Oh god, that was horrifying. And we still have like 20 damn near more episodes of this show. How is she gonna be okay? And so they can hear her just freaking out, not a clue what's going on from her side of it. But obviously Shin's worried. He did warn her, so he's, he's saying he's cutting the link and he needs to focus on his battle at hand. He really doesn't have time to be worrying about Lena as well, so I get. Did he hear Kai? So they can hear it as well? The third growl wolf from the right. Are there specific growl wolf or specific legion types that can analyze the voice patterns of the humans they're fighting and like keep them to to fuck with the mentals of current people we're fighting? One, that's dark as shit. Not as not like the show isn't insanely dark. It is, but like, two, it, it super reminds me of Hunger Games, the second Hunger Games. They have like these little ravens that all the contestants on the inside of the Hunger Games will hear, like, the sounds, recorded sounds, of their loved ones on the outside of the, you know, so it's like, it really fucks with your mental, like, you really cannot focus on, it's, it's crazy. I was not expecting the mind games like that from the Black Sheep, I do like how there's another name for a different type of Legion unit, but it doesn't necessarily seem like it's a different type, because it looked like it was just a Growl Wolf that happened to be a Black Sheep version, or was doing that, which is super crazy. Probably the first time in a minute without hearing Lena at night, you know? So, normally this is when the handler would break and never call back again. Oh, wow, she did. She called in. Is that really it? Because Shin was the only one I could see that could see it, that could hear it besides Lena. I think they're ghosts too. They're the army of a lost country. Damn, this is getting fucking scary. This is like nightmare shit. So the reason you know... Well, that is true. They really have no... Oh, hell no. That's horrifying. Really? I didn't know that. 
Oh. That's not a thing, is it? That's horrifying. They're really adapting. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. When you think about it, yeah. And then there'll be nothing left standing in the Legion's way. As the as the camera sh as that flower the dead flower cuts and all you see is the one alive flower of that field of dead ones you know a ghost commander who leads and guides the unthinking legion we call them shepherds it is indeed so that's our end date that's our goal one year before Shin retires you know we are gonna be ending the legion oh those transitions with like the ending frame they do for the ending is every time it gets me i did thought i saw like a hint of a scar earlier when he when he talked about it, he, he he at one point almost died what did he just say I'll be going soon. And the the mirror is like cut right where in the shot. What is Alright, that was a crazy ass ending. This next one is episode six called Through to the End. Let's do this. Alright, 2144. So four years prior. So this is still after everything that happened with um Shurei and Lena, but this is before what's going on right now currently. I mean, I guess I didn't think about it, but him being in service for five years and looking like he's like 16, 17 right now means he started at like age 11, 12. That's crazy. They really are sending kids out to straight fight. Is that his brother? That has to be. The Undertaker Juggernaut. Is his head missing? Is that one of the peep reasons he was saying I can find my brother? I've been searching for him for five years. All right, July 27th. So about a month after. At least, ooh. That tra the transitions in the show are so well done. April 5th. This is before. Oh yeah, that's Kaye. Is this is this when they first met? So this is what they were talking about when they first got deployed here, looking at the flowers. Okay. I love the cherry blossoms. Daya definitely has a crush on Anju. You can tell. Oh, that's uh, that's Kujo, right? That was his name and his call sign. What's his What's his actual name, man? Is this when uh, Theo originally drew the the pig princess handler kind of thing? And this when they first heard of Le Lena? Yep. Theo is really good at the drawing. His doodles are really good. If I was in their position too, I'd be roasting any new handler that's like, going to come in. Come on, you know? So I get it. But little do they know the amount of the relationship they would have. They have a good sense of humor for being in their situation. I mean, that's all you really can do. Like I said, they seem like great kids, you know? Man, R.I.P. Kai. R.I.P. Kujo as well. I didn't know that. A cherry blossom. I love their marks and their individualness, you know, the personalities with them. 
He's the headless reaper of the Eastern Front. The headless reaper of the Eastern Front. That's kind of a... Is that not a crazy ass rumor? Like, I don't know where that stems from. Maybe someone else besides Shin, but technically the actual juggernaut owner of his juggernaut is the headless reaper who actually died on the Eastern Front, who Shin is actually looking for his head. So that's just crazy. The next, let's make the next six months good ones. Look at all these good people, you know. It's been four months since then. She's a fighter in her own way. You know, I had to say that because, I mean, look at these guys are sitting in mobile mech scorpion tanks going into actual fucking crazed combat. But she's a fighter. Come on. The hell are those fucking peons for the Legion? They're like... Oh my god, those scorpion mortar shells are crazy. Anytime anyone gets injured, I'm so nervous. Daya, no hesitation. Going to save the squad mate. I respect it, even though... Oh, these things are like kamikaze bombers. No way. No! I like Daya so much! It's gonna try to chop her head off too, isn't it? She's gonna shoot herself. Oh my god. Turned off everything. Oh my god, bro. They always say stuff, and it's always muted, and I never know. Oh, I want to know what Daya said to Aunt. That sucks, man. Just after I got, I like Daya and Anji so much more, you know? Yeah, he always... Now it makes a lot more sense why he puts everyone out of their misery, you know? He's done this with Kujo. Die, oh my god, man. They muted it. So well done, but god damn, man, I'm so sad. What is he here? You heard the voice of a soul? Yeah, man. The grief and the... The depression can be... I can't even imagine, bro. Andrew's going through it right now. Trying to get their mind off things, you know? Stay positive. It's probably Daya's bed right there. Blames me for what? So that was his brother last episode in that little flash we saw? With someone choking him out? Daya and Leka. That's the part of his that he has the head chopped off. And he's taken back to that day. He's literally having like a nightmare. Back to literally his brother's headless body. That mom and dad died. Oh, wow. That's horrible. Horrible. But if I had to guess, and I don't want to guess without context, but I love having the ability of foreshadowing. Uh, the show is so well, it gives you like such little clues for you to try to piece it together, but then eventually we'll give you the whole picture. But I do know from last episode that at, so at some point Shin remembers seeing the, the palace in District 1, you know, and he remembers going with his brother, but he doesn't remember anything else. Did something Shin do make make their parents be held responsible and, and executed or something along those lines. And due to that, they were they were stripped of their citizenship and forced to be 86ers, in which they were both conscripted into the war. That's the only thing I can imagine. Oh, I'm sure there's like 70. I mean, but we're talking about my pea-sized brain versus the creator of this show, you know? So it's like, I'm sure there's hundreds of other possibilities, but... So she has like her little board to try to be familiarize herself with her squad she doesn't know what they look like so she has a little doodle guess of what they look like you know Ooh, with the petals falling off the flowers on the gun shed god damn that's so sad Ooh, that's a good transition from the to the next day now oh i love that 
Okay, we're gonna have a crazy mission, and it's gonna be very dangerous. So we have to do a preemptive strike on this, on this new construct, on this new base headquarters for the Legion. She has a little box for the casualties. I like that. It's kind of like her version of Shin's thing, you know? It's which makes me only want to know about what sin Shin did and what the, the details, you know. I need to know the details so much. I think I could ship them. Lena and Shin. She's she's a little embarrassed he's not saying anything. Oh, her heart's beating. Her heart's beating a lot. Okay, Lena getting all nervous. Hmm, <laughs> that's adorable. Like, come on, girl, you're a handler of a <laughs> ace commander military platoon over here getting nervous from talking to the command. Come on. Oh, with the chocolate and the heart being the... You know a show just has me hooked and is so good when I got so much information in these last two episodes. And I wrote down one name, and it's Shuri. It's uh, Shin's brother, Shure Nozen. Other than that, like I'm just like glued to the screen, damn near the whole time. Ugh. This show does such a good. It's so good at making me like a character just to kill them off immediately. Like, oh my! Like it was, it's actually shocking how much I like Daya. Like, and I remember saying this a few episodes ago when they were just you know spying on them. In the, in the river, having their little good time, you know, the little guy on girl, little pervert scene, you know, always have to have those in animes. Daya was like the Ida of the group, and I love Ida so much. He was like, no, we can't do this. I can't look at Anju. You know, it's so sacred. And it's like, you can tell, man. And it, it only, it just, it makes the show so deep, but so well written is, is when you care about these characters and you know it's such a shame and a tragedy of the situation they're in. So you root for Lena in trying to fix this situation, but you know how impossible it is because of like the way it's it's built up. Like this is government that's already been set in stone and its foundation is already, you know, so solid that there's no way it's gonna change its ethical and moral values over a few people that it thinks it deems not even existing in the way. So it's like it's such a horrible, horrible, horrible scenario, but the fact that it's still so funny and light-hearted and i care about these characters because they're so expressive and you can tell how good people they are it's like it makes it even worse like if these were cold-hearted fucking brutal killers i'd you know it'd be something but daya does not daya anju any of them leka daya kaye kujo any of them raiden shin theo any of them none of them deserve to die it's 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 a horrible scenario it really is God damn, you know, and uh, I don't want to get political. Obviously, you guys know there's some there's some major things going on in the world right now going on, but it's like, like obviously this is an anime, but this is definitely based off realistic scenarios, and I'm sure there are very very young soldiers right now putting their lives on the line for you know m morals and and the things that, and they believe in and the things you know like it's it's crazy but sad, so it's just like. It really makes you think, guys. You know, be nice to the people you love. Treat those around you with, with kindness and compassion. <sighs> Let's just be a good person. The show is depressing. Depressing, to say the least. I love it, though. I love it. It's such a great show. Such a great show. If you guys enjoyed, please leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down below. Don't forget to subscribe. Click that bell so you guys always know when I post on the Dapper channel. Check out that Patreon. Early access, full length, four episodes. Links are in the description. Don't forget to drink some water. Tell someone you love them. Have a great day, Dapper Squad. Peace.